Over the next few days, you continue to help out around the Mystery Shack. Not out of obligation, but because you have nothing better to do. Besides, Seuss, practically the golden retrieval of people, is really digging the input on the current installments from an outsider's perspective. Love Seuss. So great. Bless his soul, the guy even offer you a job if you... <clears throat> Hold on, I need to say some, like, Seuss quotes to get into the feel of it. What, what are some common <laughs> Seuss quotes? <laughs> um, end up stranded here forever, dude. And need to make a life for yourself. Then nearly choked on his ice pop at the overhood. Heard. Oh! Thinking about it now, the relationship between Seuss and Stan is unexpected, if not a little odd. But it makes you smile that no matter how many times Stan may roll his eyes as he does it, he'll always help Seuss get something done just right. Aww. Aww. Showered and dressed, you go outside as per usual. Ooh. But don't see anyone. After a few minutes' search, you find Stan, Stan standing with his back to you in one of the in one of the exhibit rooms, admiring the weird and wonderful animal amalgamate he's collected for his tourist trap. Handed his chin in thought. Am I interrupting something important between you and the goose turkey? <laughs> Stan turns at the sound of your voice, smiling. Nope. You need something. You have any plans tonight? Ooh. Ooh. He mulls your question over for a few moments, giving you an assessing look up and down. <gasps> Whoa! Before before I decide if I want to date you or not, I gotta check you out one more time, okay? I've got a couple errands to run. Why? You want to tag along? Ooh, only if you need a partner in crime. What That's, do you think? I like that. Yeah, one. yeah. Sam Blink. Surprise. Sorry, then oh. with you. Yeah, Stan blinks in surprise. Ha! What are you, psychic? We did it. Wait, really? It was just a figure of speech, but you guess you should have known better. Alright, I'm heading out in a couple hours. Meet me out front. Mark, that's right. He does give us a good amount of assessing looks. Ass-essing looks. Uh... Uh... A couple of hours, but... No butts, loot. You can't rush this stuff. Trust me. Okay. Yes, but salute. Sure. Not ominous at all, Stan. Yeah, yeah. Meet me out front if you think you can handle it. Of course I can! He turns to go, but stops for a second and then turns back. Oh, and wear black. Something you don't mind getting dirty. Fuck yeah! Let's do this! And before you can ask why, he's gone. Into the depths of the shack. Loot <laughs> butts. <laughs> butts, butts, butts. Butts. We're mature adults. We are! <laughs> a couple hours turns into a handful, which you pass by watching some TV with Mabel and Dipper and dozing off. You have no idea what kind of satellite they get out here, but the shows on now are some of the most bizarre programming you've ever seen. Once you've had enough of waiting, you change into your darkest clothes and sit up and sit out on the front steps of the shack, watching as the sun starts to sink past the trees. It's cloudy and unusually warm for this time of day, but there's a nice breeze out. It's strange that these errands need to happen so late in the day. Considering the things you've gathered about his criminal past, however, maybe this is a typical weekday night for Stan. Ooh, hot <gasps> Hello. So high-pitched. The screen door creaks, and out comes Stan, dressed in all black, just You're like just you sweaty. are, with a luffy, with a lumpy duffel bag under one oh, arm, luffy. luffy duffel bag under one arm, and a briefcase in the other hand. Costume change, your right, Mark. As he's about to speak, a sudden gust of wind comes along and ruffles his hair, Ooh. and he smooths it down irritatedly before regaining his cool and nodding at you. Ready? Fuck yeah. Should I just count that in place if you're ready? You slide into the passenger seat as Stan settles into the driver's seat. It takes a couple tries to start, but the engine's chugging away by the time you've got your seatbelt on. The radio stammers to life as the engine does, spitting out generic-sounding rock music into the leather-scented air of the car's interior. After a moment spent adjusting mirrors and fiddling with knobs, Stan Stan slots slots the gear shift into drive, and pulls out the mystery shack slot and down the road to town. Ooh, animation! Woo! I think the art style changed. 
<gasps> Look at that hair! The radio's on and Stan taps his finger on the steering wheel to the beat of the music while he drives. So I take it we're not making a quick trip for Malik and Eggs? He laughs, ha, ah! and glances over at you. That's definitely not the right kind of laugh, but I like saying it. Ha! Nope. Fuck, I'm eating. Then where are we going? First stop is to see a buddy of mine, a hunter. I get all my taxidermy supplies from him. So, that's where you get your parts from? Yeah. Oh, I just figured you got them from a local farm or something. I do business with those hippies? Not a chance. Well, I really enjoyed making that showpiece with you the other day. I had no idea you were so creative. He glances over at you with poorly hidden surprise, turning almost immediately back to the road and shrugging. I was right in the art style and shape. I went, yes! It's just gluing stuff together, really. No, really, it takes a lot of skill. Right. You have a real gift for it. Look at that smile! Yeah! He turns to you again and his cheeks go a little pink when he sees the smile you're giving him. Ooh. He's blushing. Well, thanks. After a moment, he faces the road again, but now he's tapping out the rhythm of the song with a little more enthusiasm and even humming the chorus as he drives. Wait, what is he humming? Come sail away. Come sail away. Come sail away with me. <laughs> That's not exactly generic, but it's one that makes me think of Stan, so. Do you have any other hobbies? He rolls his shoulders back in a shrug, his head tilting off a bit towards the window. Uh, these days I spend most of my time out on the boat with Ford, hunting monsters, discovering things. He pauses, watching the road without expression. I used to box. Really? Wait, wait, do we do it Really, shows? or it shows? I don't know. I don't know. I don't see either being good answers. Yeah, my instinct was really, so that what might be what Nico? Luke would do. Nico, what do you think? Two. We're going two. All right. I, uh, wouldn't mind showing you a few things, if you wanted. Mm, I'd like that. I think Lou would pick I'd like yeah. that. Lou wouldn't you... say that he wouldn't no, be good no, at Lou something. No, Lou would never say that, yeah. yeah. After about 20 minutes of rural scenery, Stan pulls off the road and onto a long gravel driveway that disappears into Do the woods. Do we get to box with him? I hope so. Is this the place? Stan nods and rounds a turn to reveal a clearing, populated by a trailer home and a couple sheds. The trailer is a bit run down and shabby, and one of the sheds looks like it's about it's about one strong sneeze from collapsing. Not really the place you want to be at night, while alone with a guy you practically just met. Be honest, did you bring me here to murder me? Stan laughs, cutting the engine and resting his arm on the back of the front seat. Unfortunately, you figured it out, so now I've definitely got to kill you. Fuck! Uh... Bad ending. <laughs> Game over. I'm kidding, kid. Relax. He moves to get out of the car, then turns back with a creepy, blank expression on Fuck! his face. Fuck! He really does murder you. This is the murder <laughs> ending, isn't it? Or am I? You chuckle nervously, and he laughs again, pushing the door open. Seriously, I'm kidding. Won't be long. At the door to the trailer, Stan knocks and the door opens on a dark interior before he walks inside. The door shuts behind him. You give the yard a few curious glances before realizing that the weird pile of sticks you've been looking at is actually bones. You quickly pull out your phone to look at instead. Ten minutes later, and Stan's back, carrying a large cardboard box in both hands. You see him from crumble, fumble, with the handle of the rear left door for a moment before you reach back over the seat and pop it open for him. A peek in the box reveals a few various shades of furry somethings and an animal skull you don't recognize. This doesn't seem so like something worth busting out all your darkest studs for. We aren't by any chance robbing a bank, are we? Because I would have brought gloves. Stan laughs. No, nothing like that. He starts the car up again and you're back on the road. You... Somehow, I'm not quite convinced. Well... Who knows where the night's gonna take us? Could be legal, could be not. The best kind of date is an illegal date. That a problem? Uh, hmm. I, Luke seems like exactly the kind of dumbass who would normally have his strong principles and be like, 
yeah, we're not breaking the law, but when when it's a hot guy involved, people are like, no, nah, that's fine, you're hot. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Luke would be sarcastic. I feel like he'd go with the jeweler option. I feel like he would be sarcastic. I can you're see honest, that. you're gonna get shit that yeah, I know. And and I agree with Whitney, like, you know, Luke would be the kind of person who's like principles and then flirting and it's like, no. So, Dude, that one, I feel, I feel, jeweler, I I like, feel, like, I feel I like, like it's Luke, funny. I feel like Luke would be a smart ass about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we want to play as Luke. This we, one was a good answer. We want to play as Luke, but we also want to seduce the Stan. Exactly. And Luke wants to stand, stand. So he would Luke do that. Wants to watch. Fuck yeah. Ha. Huh. You're right, kid. Look at Mark. I'm learning about so much about Luke. This is great. We're learning so much about Luke, too. What a good yeah. meeting. Stan takes the highway, the final minutes of the sunsets burnt orange and purple ahead of you, while the welcome sign for Gravity Falls disappears into the rearview mirror. Fuck! A new song comes on the radio, something bright and bouncy, with <gasps> lyrics about love, and his fingers get back to the What song is it? Um, don't go breaking my heart. I couldn't if I tried. Oh, I am. In the retreating light, you can see faded patches on the rim of the steering wheel, the color worn away from decades worth of his touch. His touch. He's thinking about his oh. touch. The passenger seat you sit in hasn't yet taken the shape of someone specific. Even after all this time, the springs still feel brand new. That's because Stan hasn't met me yet. Exactly. Meanwhile, on the driver's side of the car, Stan settled easily into his seat, which fits him as well as a finely tailored oh jacket. You tug your leg up under its mate, leaning back into the dark leather of the DeVille's interior, and watch cars pass and recede out on out the windshield. Not on the windshield. <laughs> Running away together. After a few minutes of music back silence, you feel like breaking it. Okay, we're telling a joke, we're telling a joke. Let's let's just do it. Oh, oh we have to oh, pick fuck! Okay, 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 okay. My first thought is the chicken one because it's farm related and Luke's a farm boy. Yeah. But let's see, why are there fences around? I feel like the granddad had the heart of a lion is reaching up to a pun. Mm. Okay, so. I think the chicken coops is the most booty thing. Yeah, okay, why do chicken coops have two doors? Stan glances over you, double checking that this is the setup to a joke. I don't know why. But. Because if they had four doors, they'd be chicken sedans. <laughs> Stan laughs. Ha! Oh. <laughs> ha! That's pretty good. Oh my god, pure face! He thinks for a minute, presumably to come up with a joke of his own. Stan, open your eyes, you're driving. Alright, a blonde walks into a bank in New York City. Aw, oh, no. This ain't, this, this ain't going to be one of them awful blondes or dumb jokes. Oh, I clicked before you were done talking, sorry. Okay. He levels a withering look on you. Can I tell the joke? We fucked up! I don't know. Can ya? You grin with your lower lip ca caught between your so teeth. So like this? Like... I don't know. Clearly joking, and he chuckles. Anyways, Vaughn walks into a bank in New York. She goes up to the bank manager, <gasps> I and she says- I purchased one! It's such a good one! Oh yeah, I have two. I'd like to take out a loan for $5,000, and I'm taking a vacation overseas. A car passes you on the highway, going 20 over the speed limit, and Stan swears and then stifles it. Eesh, night drivers. So the bank manager goes, Well, miss, do you have collateral? We need collateral for that kind of loan. And she nods and says she does, and she takes the bank manager out to the parking lot, where she's got a $50,000 Ferrari waiting, and she says, This is my car. You can hold on to it until I pay back my loan. Stan continues, glancing over you and trying to suppress a smile. The bank manager's confused, but he figures if this lady doesn't pay, he's gonna have a nice new Ferrari in his garage, so he agrees. A sign for an exit ahead points off the right, the text reading, Country Road 328. No, it's County Road. Oh, County Road. Take me home, <laughs> County, County Road. road. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, reading, County Road 328, and Stan takes it off the highway. You really are just running away together, huh? Yeah. So he gives the blonde her 5Gs, and she hands him the keys to her car, and she heads off to Europe. A month later, she shows up back at the bank with the 5Gs and the interest for the loan, which figures out to about 15 bucks. Stan continues, turning down an unlit gravel road, the headlights casting spooky shadows, Ooh. spooky shadows, through the trees. 
bank manager takes the repayment for the loan and the interest and has one of his employees bring the car out in front of the bank for the blonde. Out ahead on the road, a deer turns its face to the car and then leaps across the road to disappear into the woods. Just before she leaves, the bank manager stops the blonde and says, Lady, I'm real confused here. You're clearly loaded enough to afford this car, and you paid back the loan and then some. Why take out the loan if you're so rich? And the lady turns to him, runs a hand through her hair, and says, Where else can I park my car in New York City for two weeks for only 15 bucks? I love that joke. I've heard it before. It's fucking awesome. It's funny, right? Yeah, it is. You burst into wild laughter, and he laughs along with you. All right, I take it back. That was the best blonde joke I've ever heard in my life. Just as you finish speaking, Stan pulls off to the side of the road, and the engine dies. As you step out of the car, the unearthly silence of the woods envelops the two of you. Out in the woods ahead, you see a single bright light. Fuck, it's the will of the west! Bell Cipher! Is this the place? Just about. You follow him back towards the trunk, which he opens quietly and slowly, frowning as it squeaks. What are we doing here? Dot, dot, dot. You, uh, you might not guess it looking at me, but I got a thing. The two of you stare at each other for a moment, and he looks a little nervous. Oh, snap, the suspense. <gasps> for art. No, Nico is a girl! She can still be the best boy. She is. She's she her bestness transcends gender like us. Yes. Best Sorry for yelling at you, Nor. He brightens, smiling in the dim haze of the trunk light. Ah, oh, Nico never steers us wrong. Well, this chump up this hill here has one by this artist, Gustav Cl- Clonang. Snuck it from right out under me at an auction. I've been trying to buy it off him for years, but the jerk won't sell no matter how much I offer him. And trust me, you meet this guy, you know it's out of spite. So we're stealing it? You got it, kid. I'm calling me kid, I'm, like, a few days younger than you. <laughs> um, fuck, I don't know. I mean, if we have loot, you know, have, like, morals and principles, he won't then get he's not the gonna stand. get with Stan, yeah. Alright, we're going with two. Well, you did try to buy it Well, first. you did try to buy it first. Exactly! Oh, that was a good decision. But yeah, Beatrice, babe, um, if you hear barking, that is our pupper, the Nico. Uh, actually, she doesn't have a the in her name. It's just Nico. Uh, and this is me. I am the last speecher. And then with me, the person doing the stream with the stream on the thing is my wonderful, amazing roommate... Uh, Darfik Irantunstrakhelm, uh, aka Whitney. Hi! So, yes. Stan laughs quietly, fishing around in the duffel bag for you don't know what. I've been waiting six months for him to go out of town. Here, take these. He pulls a pair of gloves from the bag, handing them to you. When you slide them on, they fit almost perfectly. Oh shit! He it's like your OJ. hands with his eyes. <laughs> if the glove does not fit, you must equip. That's why they fit almost perfectly. So you have, you know, excuse you, an Nor. Alibi. I guess your size right. I can you see. nod, wiggling your oh, fingers. Okay. Stan chuckles, pulling on a pair of his own, a set of black leather driving gloves with silver snap closures that glint in the light from the trunk. You ready, kid? You bet. We're all in. Ride or die. Stan tucks a few things into the inner pockets of his jacket that you can't see in the low light. Condoms. And with the trunk <laughs> shot, just, shot just as quietly as it was opened, you follow him into the woods towards the distant light. Don't follow the light! As you near it, a porch takes shape within the light's glow. Okay. I'm tagging in. That's fine. Behind it, the dark shape of a house sits in the even darker woods. Stan leads you past the front porch and around the corner of the house to a set of stairs that appears to lead into a basement. Oh, fuck. Ah, this is my favorite part. He withdraws a small black shape from his pocket and something that looks like it might be a pen. The pen-shaped thing turns out to be a small flashlight and he holds it in his teeth as he opens the black case to reveal a set of lock-picking tools. Oh, fuck. 
You're a lucky person, kid. You sit, you get to see the artist in action. Mark, what what's beautiful? What one's beautiful? Okay. Uh, he gets to work, inserting one tool in and wiggling it down the bottom of the keyhole, then pulling out another and poking at the innards of the lock with it. Innards. You, you glance around in the darkness as he works, half expecting to get caught before you get anywhere, but then the lock clicks and stand opens. Uh, stand stands. <laughs> Opening the door for you with a flourish. That was so cool. He beams with pride, and you smile politely as you step through the door in front of him. Nico, you're crunching! The basement is unlit. It smells like dust and mildew, the air sour with wet dirt and mold. Stan moves past you into the dark, his little pink flashlight still lit, and leads you through a cobwebby laundry room and towards a door across from the bottom of a set of rickety wooden stairs. Is that Ford's laundry room? It's got cobwebs. I don't think Ford is the one that, like, beat him in a bidding war on the art auction. I know, I was making a crack! I know! I know. <laughs> wait, okay. till you, wait till you see this, kid. He picks the lock of this door just as quite quickly as he picked the last, and the door creaks open into a dark room with odd flooring, barely lit by Stan's flashlight. Stan goes first, and as you follow him in, he hits a light switch, revealing a beautifully designed gallery with plush scarlet carpets and gleaming wood paneling full of... BEES! <laughs> Paintings of sad clowns. This BEES? It's beautiful. It's not bees. <laughs> Beads? BEES! Doing it in some random styles you're breaking into with all the clowns watching what a romantic. Oh my god. Yeah. Stan yeah. looks more excited than you've seen him yet. His arms crossed over his chest and a warm smile on his face. So this is what Stan's into. He has a clown fetish. Should have known. Can you believe that hillbilly chump has a collection like this? You shake your head slowly, still looking around the room with wide eyes. Oh, I need more water. I'm Wait, gonna like have a hangover chump. tomorrow. Is this? Are we in? Are we in Fiddleford's house? Or are we in? Bud Gleeful's house because he had the sad cloud painting. But please, please never no! say that. Please never say no! those words do to not, me ever again. Do not take our stream with that nonsense. <laughs> we're, we're, we're yelling, but we forgive you, Noor. We love you. But also, please never say that ever again. <clears throat> Someday, all of these are going to be mine. Come on, I'll show you the one we're here to get. You follow him to the back of the room, and he stops in front of a large painting of a clown with bright red lips and blue circles on his cheeks, his eyes outlined in black with comically large eyelashes painted onto his eyelids. His neck ruff droops sadly, and his costume is dingy and worn. I always bring the fun facts, Mark. <laughs> what do you think? Is it beautiful, or is it a little creepy? I want to get the good results. Let's do it! We're playing as Loot, and Loot is being... He's trying to get the stand as well. So, this. This is beautiful. You really like this kind of thing? No kidding? Stan's voice is edged with hope. Oh, sorry, you were narrationing. It's okay. They're all beautifully done. It's nice to meet somebody who really appreciates these like I do. I don't... I don't know what the difference really is here in terms of, like, it's just plain excellent. I love the irony. Clowns are supposed to be happy, but he's not. I wish I knew the story behind it. You look over at Stan and he looks delighted. Aww. Hot Belgian waffles, you really do like it. Well, let's get this thing off the wall and out of here. Oh my god. As he works to get the clowning off the wall, you clowning. I clowning. Get it now. Ah. 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 Uh, you wander the room looking at the other paintings. As you look over a portrait of a mime with dirt on his white and black striped shirt, you're suddenly grabbed by your shoulders. Oh no, it's question marks. You. Boo! Ah! 
You scream, eyes shut in fear as you throw a weak karate chop at the source of the nose noise. Loot, you're better than that. I bet it's just Stan messing with them. Um, making unimpressive contact with something solid and muscular. After a moment's panic, you squeeze whatever the thing is with your hands and open your eyes, finding... <gasps> ha! Was that supposed to hurt me? <gasps> Stan's arm and shoulder. Ooh. Ooh. Physical contact. Boy, he's... He's really packing some heat in there. Wow. Luke didn't pay his admission for this gun show. <laughs> he doesn't have the tickets. Luke would bring actual guns. He laughs, apparently very pleased with himself for scaring the absolute fuck out of you. You need those boxing tips even more than I thought. You couldn't defend yourself from a fly with moves like that. Well, in my defense, I don't have my gun. You laugh shakily, and then you realize you're still feeling up Stan's arm. Sorry about that. You pull your hands away a bit too fast, then he chuckles, blushing all the way up to his ears. Ooh. Let's get another blushy Stan, come on! Yes! No problem, kid. He clears his throat, and the silence between you begins to grow awkward before it's interrupted. Upstairs, in what is supposed to be an empty house, you hear footsteps crossing towards the door to the basement. Stan apparently hears them too, a sudden series of expressions crossing the space from shock to confusion to terror and finally settling on indignation. He quickly takes you by the arm, whispering harshly in your ear as he drags you toward the entrance of the clown room. As soon as he comes in here, shut the door and I'll shove these boxes in front. You nod, and just as a line of light from the top of the stairs blooms into a wide swath, you and Stan duck behind a wall near the door to freedom, one corner of the stolen paint and painting poking you uncomfortably in the ribs. Question mark. Who's down there? That's just gonna be my rando voice, okay. I guess. Who's down there? Sounds like my Ford impression. Oh, I'll have to change No, it up honey, then. it's okay! Slippered feet come down the wooden steps ahead of you, and when their owner notices the light on, he holds something long and gun-shaped out in front of himself. Oh, shit. It's Fuzzy Lumpkins. <laughs> Pines, if that's you, I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot you this time. Gun-shaped? Gun... Shaped? Gun... Gun... Oh, sweet, a gun! <laughs> no, it's pointed at you, it's a bad thing. <laughs> Stan nudges you, jabbing a thumb towards the door, leading you outside, and jerks his head towards it. It doesn't work well for Luke, because he's not a vanilla. Not wanting a gun <laughs> pointed at you is not a vanilla thing, it's a common sense you take a preservation thing. You take a step out from behind the wall, take Stan's hand in your own and pull him into a jog and then a run. The two of you scrambling up the concrete steps out of the, to the cool night air as a voice shouts and swears behind you. Ah, fuck you! Fuck crap! Titty! Heck! <laughs> damn! <laughs> Shit, fuck damn! Stan kicks the door shut on his way out and there's a startled yelp behind you as it makes contact with the owner of the house. Oh, Nor suggested a good swear we forgot about. Poop! Poop, heck darn! Poop! Poop and butts. Iravescent. Apple fritter. Rhyme of Laven. <laughs> okay. Stan kicks the door shut on his way out. Wait, I already read that. There's more swearing, but you lose it behind you as you run. Flashlight in one hand and Stan's hand in the other. <gasps> Holding hands. When you reach the tree line, you part and maneuver your way through bushes and brambles, stand crashing through them behind you. As you run, a deafening gunshot goes off behind Achoo. you, and you realize you're being chased. That's my that's my gun noise. Pachoo. Well done. Thank you. Pew pew pew. Guns. <laughs> Do the thing. Holy smokes! Run for it, Lou. The noises get closer, close enough that you can hear your pursuer swearing continually and loudly. You slow a bit, flashing your light behind you and raising the beam to find a distant but visibly enraged face of a man with a rifle in his hands. Acting on pure instinct, you fling the flashlight in the direction of the anger man and take off running again. After a moment, the man cries out and the sounds of pursuit fade with one final cry. Fuck yeah, sharpshooter! Loot! Damn you, Pines! 
stand cackles. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Sounds like you hit him. You reach the standmobile first, sliding into the passenger seat as Stan flips his new clowning uh, into the back seat before joining you in front. Both of you panting and huffing, Stan hurriedly starts the engine and pulls off. At the next driveway, he does the fastest three-point turn you've ever seen in your life and then peels off down the gravel road and screeches out into highway. Stands quiet for a second before letting loose into wild, triumphant laughter. I thought I was- I thought he was gonna catch me that time for sure. Did- did a man just shoot at us? Stan nods, still chuckling, apparently pretty pleased he didn't get hit. I'm tagging you in. I'm gonna eat. <sighs> he lets out a lo- long, loud sigh, his white-knuckled hands at ten and two on the steering wheel. <laughs> Yeah, that was... Holy moly. You okay, Luke? <laughs> Are you okay? You okay, Luke? Um, I feel like Luke would be sarcastic and say, I'll let you know when I find out. I like that answer, too. <laughs> we're not Luke having... Voice that we're not having you guys vote We need to get someone to come in and voice for Luke now, like they did with <laughs> Superman and the radio show. Aw, oh, shit, he didn't react. He pulls back onto the highway, back in the direction you came from. Want me to go back and pick a different option? <sighs> nah, I think let's just keep going. He looks happy still. Yeah. I think we're good. He pulls back onto the highway, back in the direction you came from, and you lapse into comfortable silence. After a while, he starts humming along with the radio, and knowing the song this time, you hum along with him. Shot in my heart, and you're oh. too blamed. Darling, you was, give love a I bad was, name. I was gonna sing Shut Up and Dance with yeah. Me. Oh. Gravity Falls welcome sign passes by again, but the route stands taking doesn't seem to lead back to the shack. Instead, you come to a stop outside rows and rows of used cars. Car dealership. <laughs> oh, shit. I love that face. <laughs>